Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll be going over the steps to replace the heater core hoses in your 2003 to 2006 Chevrolet SSR pickup using the product available from Simple Engineering LLC. Many portions of this video have been sourced from my Chevrolet SSR cooling system refresh video on my YouTube channel, including the sections that identify how to drain and refill the cooling system. So if you need to check those out to complete this task, there will be a link in the upper right hand corner of this screen or down in the video description section for the video you're watching right now. The heater core hoses that go from the water pump up to the firewall. This isn't available from AC Delco or GM any longer, so this is actually sourced from simple-engineering.com. Mike at Simple Engineering put a lot of time, effort, I'm sure money into getting these produced as an aftermarket quality replacement part for the SSR community, so I'll be swapping those out. You should prep the area where the heater core hoses connect to the water pump by cleaning it to make sure any debris that you have there will not be introduced into the cooling system. Of course, this is extracted from my cooling system refresh video where I've removed the lower radiator hose and I would be removing the thermostat housing, but that same applies for the heater core hoses over on the end of the water pump. Now that we have the area at the end of the water pump cleaned up before we remove the hoses, next we need to open up those clamps so that one on each hose, of course, and open them up. I'm going to use some hose clamp pliers to compress the two tabs together to open them up. And then I'm going to use that to walk the clamps down off the nipple on the end of the water pump. You can feel like a big bulge there at the end of that nipple where that that is the sealant section. So you need to get it beyond that onto the soft portion of the hose. And with those moved off, we can go look at the other part. There's usually on the OEM installation, there is a zip tie that retains the heater core hose that runs by the base of the surge tank. You need to clip that so you can extract that from that hose so it can move more freely. And then we're at the point where we should be able to move these hoses off. Try grabbing them with your hand and rotating them around. And if that doesn't end up working, you could use some sort of plastic pry tool or something to move the hose. If necessary, a metal flat blade screwdriver, but do not touch the metal of the hose nipple because those are not being replaced and they cannot be marred up. So with those hoses off, we have the lower section out. If I didn't have the thermostat already removed, there would be a large amount of coolant coming out. So make sure you prepare for that. I have that plastic bag for routing any coolant coming out of there down to the drain pan. Next, I'm going to disconnect the larger hose that's at the bottom of the surge tank that comes from the heater core hose. And that has a hose clamp as well. And I'm gonna place the plastic bag underneath the surge tank. As you can see, I already have the upper hoses disconnected from this. This is from my general cooling system refresh. You do not need to remove the upper hoses on the surge tank. You're simply going to disconnect the lower hose and remove the bolts to move the tank out of the way. But first off, we need to get this clamp off that lower hose, which is part of the heater core hoses that we're replacing, and then pull that hose off the nipple from the lower portion of the surge tank. And once that's off, there may be a little bit of uh, residual coolant in that tank, so be prepared. That's why I have the plastic bag underneath it. There are three places that either secure or where the surge tank rests in the engine bay. One is there a tab hanging off the surge tank into the metal bracket by the fender. And then there's a leg underneath the surge tank with a little rubber foot. So make sure you don't lose that rubber piece underneath the leg. And then there's a 10 millimeter headed bolt at the base of this front leg that goes and connects to the body. So you use a 10 millimeter socket to loosen that. Sometimes grabbing that with your fingers can be a little challenging, but uh, you know, either grab it with your fingers or use a needle nose pliers to pick it out. And then with that disconnected, you should be able to lift this up. Of course, I do have the upper hoses disconnected. In your case, for the heater core hose replacement, you don't need to do that. So you would simply pick it up and tilt it and lay it over on the engine without the coolant being in the tank. There is a place for an electrical connector for the surge tank, but it is not connected in the SSR, so there's nothing to pay attention about or be concerned about. It's not missing, it's just not used in the SSR. Now we're moving up to the firewall where we have two quick disconnects to deal with. The gray tabs need to be compressed by your fingers on each side, and with them compressed, you can then walk that off. That will open up air to that end of the hose, and that may cause coolant to drain down. Make sure you collect that in your collection pan down the front and disconnect both of them by using the same approach, pressing in the gray tabs. And the gray tabs will stay behind on the nipples, and we'll talk about that in a second about removing those. In fact, I have the O-rings stay behind here. Now, you can't necessarily remove these by fingers compression of the tabs. 
You may be tempted to use a flat blade screwdriver to try to pry these off. It's important that you do not use a flat blade screwdriver. Contacting the metal may mar the surface and that's the sealing surface for the O-rings inside the new quick disconnects for the new heater core hoses. So if you need to remove them, grab a pair of needle nose pliers and the tabs that are beyond the ridge in the nipples there, you grab on that and pull it off that way safely. The last thing remaining here holding it on is that zip tie clamp that's on the stud from the valve cover. So simply pull that off. And then trying to pull them off to the side, you'll find that the dipstick top is in the way. So I pull that out and set it off to the side. And then you can gently pull those out. Wrap them underneath the air conditioning hoses. And then the gray retainer that was used to mount them to the valve cover is not going to be reused. There's a new bracket for the new routing of the hoses that will attach to the stud on the shock tower there. And don't forget to transfer over the clamps. All right, I've cleaned the nipples off the water pump side for these new hoses. And I've removed the nut from the shock tower rear uh, mounting bolt stud uh, out of uh, the way so we can put the securing bracket over that. And these new hoses actually run over the AC lines in this manner. And then they'll snap on I've already pre-lubricated the O-rings per the directions to make sure that the O-rings have lubrication to smoothly be installed on the pipes from the firewall heater core. So I'm lining all this up and it looks like it's going to be okay, but uh, we need to get these hoses on here by the water pump. They are, they are different sizes, so there's no way to really mess that up. For placement purposes, I'm going to install the hose right now for the instructions. So I'm going to push on the rear one here without putting the clamp on quite yet. And hopefully from here, basically the two hoses here are going on the water pump end. So those are fully pressed on. And then the hose here seems to be positioned appropriately. The bracket for the uh, hoses seems to be positioned correctly there. So I'm going to put that nut back on and not necessarily tight it, tighten it quite yet, but make sure that it at least puts the tension on the bracket in case I need to reposition it at all. Okay. And like I said, the lubrication of the O-rings has already been accomplished. So I'm going to do the one that's nearest, the shortest one here, basically. And that's the bigger hose. So with that lubricated, this should just simply snap on and go over that uh, retention ring in the tubing. And these have already been cleaned before. So let's gently wiggle that on. And you can feel the O-rings kind of slide over that, and that should hear a little click. And there's that. So that's on. And I should have the same thing with this one. Wait for the O-rings to go over the tubing. And I felt that there. And then it should be a little click. And those are now on. So this appears to be positioned correctly at this point. And now I'm going to go ahead and tighten the nut on the shock mount. And that's in place. Let's make sure this one's tight as well. Yes. And I should be able to put the two clamps in place on the front here. So I don't forget to do that. Get past the sealant portion of the nipple, and that's in place. Get it standing up with hose on both sides of it, but past the ridge in the nipple. Okay, those are in place. Now the uh, tank should be able to be put in place. 
I'm gonna clean some of the goo off of here. So the rubber foot's in place. And then we have the clip over here that needs to go into this bracket here. As you can probably tell, that's a brand new tank. Instead of the original AC Delco tank, I replaced the surge tank with one from Dorman. And I did that because I'm refreshing the cooling system in this particular video example. But if you're reusing your existing tank, you'll still have those two hoses connected to the top of it. So simply flip it over from where you stored it when you removed it before and put it back in place and then continue to follow the instructions. All right, it's got a 10 millimeter headed bolt. Put that back in place. Sure, we're fully engaged up here. It's sitting on the foot up there. All right. Okay, that's in place. I'll have to deal with that in a little bit. I don't want to delay too much on that. All right, this is a brand new plastic fitting. So we're gonna put the connection from the heater hose section over that. It's fully over that nipple. And now I'm gonna get the clamp, put it in place. I need to move that clamp position. I need to turn it Rotate it 90 degrees. That's all the way on to the tank nipple. And now I should be able to grab this more easily. Wiggle this on here. Pass the bulge in the nipple for sealing. Let go. And don't forget to reinstall your engine oil dipstick that you removed to remove the heater core hoses. So now that you've got them back installed, put that back in place. Make sure you take a zip tie and run it through the hole in the front leg of the surge tank and wrap it around the T-fitting and the heater core hoses and lightly snug it up against there to secure the T-fitting up against the surge tank. Now that the surge tank's reinstalled and all the heater core hoses have been reconnected or any other hoses you may have removed while installing the heater core hoses, make sure you check your system for leaks and refill the system. Use your favorite approach to do so. This is from my cooling system refresh video where I use this airlift vacuum leak checker and quick fill tool. So if you wanna check that out, go look at the description section for that link to go check out that video. The steps to get the heater core hoses installed are pretty straightforward as you can see in the video. Thanks to Mike at Simple Engineering for doing the research, work, and effort to get these heater core hoses available to the SSR community. Without them, we wouldn't have any replacement parts for this. So hopefully you found the information in this video helpful. If you like the content, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, hit that bell notification to be notified when I upload new videos to the channel, and make sure you check out the links in the description section and look for the one for Simple Engineering to go find these parts. Thanks for watching.